how is that? <laughs> uh, do we have everyone here? Um, the wing is it M and M and uh, what Terrific team are we? Trio. Terrific trio. Terrific trio. Uh, do we have and all? Do we have all member for both team? Hi oh, everyone, please. I have some spaghetti uh, spaghetti for you guys to eat. Do you guys want some? <laughs> no, bring popcorn. <laughs> this, this is not the proper food to eat right now. No, it's lime. <laughs> so, so uh, I may M -M -M. for you guys. Remind me, please. Uh, who is the proposition? <coughs> it's the first team. M and M or. Uh, we're opposition. So it's terrific and um, the retreat trial and uh, M and M, yeah. Yeah. In that order, yeah. All right. No. One so, more second. One more second. A uh, Sunday, fifth, eleven. Right. You can start. Mr. Moderator? No worries. Give me just 20 <laughs> seconds and... 20 seconds? Okay. 20 Victoria, are you judges today or no? Oh, yes. I as an allegiance Can you make change... sure you change the correct background, please? Judges can't be... <laughs> It's remember <laughs> this is semi final, guys. We are, you know, we are near. I love so, that little thing, right? Okay, right. When you ready, so I think we're forgetting someone here. Who, um, Rosa, I think. Yeah, Rosa, we don't have Rosa here. Rosa, right. Mr. Michael, are you there? It's been right, I am 20. here. I'm forgetting someone here. Oh, Rosa. Now give me a second. Let I see who should be today. It's Jason, Rosa, and Ham. All right. Now, if Rosa is not here, Victoria can be a uh, a replacement judge because we need to start. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Ms. Duke, can you just reply to that message I sent you and then I'm ready to begin? Oh, okay. Um, right. So today, um, the motion for today, everyone, is should a children have a say in a family decision? Right. So we have one through. Um, the school related topic for round one, round two, round three of NCSN debate. And for the last two uh, round, semi final and final, we will have a family related topic. So, again, the topic today should a children have a say in family decisions? Right. Okay, can you send it into the chat? because my I think my Wi-Fi is not good, so I can't hear your voice clear. You can't so hear can you clear? Okay, yeah, I write it. Yeah. Should your children have a say in family decision? That's the that's the motion for today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What oh, does it mean? Okay. Have a say. Say what? <laughs> have the, opinion. Should the children's opinion on family decisions matter, basically? So if, for example, if the parents are planning a vacation somewhere or they, uh, they're planning a party or something like that, should the children of the family, uh, should their ideas and input be welcomed into the final product, basically? Okay, that's a hard debate. Uh, well, <laughs> we we will definitely see what our wonderful debaters have, what arguments they've come up with today. Anyway, let's get started. 
Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the first debate of the semi-finals of our NCSN Debate Championship Tournament. Uh, the motion we'll be debating today is, should children have a say in family decisions? Uh, arguing for the proposition saying yes, uh, children's decisions should be considered in family decisions. We have the team of the terrific trio, Tina, Anna and Kelvin. Their opponents arguing the opposition today, saying that no, children's decisions should not matter in family decisions. We have the team of MLM, who are Lucy, Michael and Mina. Okay, so um, if you guys love sweets, you guys can change your name to M&M's. <laughs> But they have Michael, Lucy, and Mina. MLM fits perfectly. Why would they change it? Her name's Lucy, I not mean, Lucy. And, uh, I mean, the twin brothers of Eminem and Skittles fight together. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, to begin today's proceedings, I would like to invite the first speaker of the proposition team, Tina to present her opening statements. Uh, if you're ready, your time begins in three, two, one, go. And in today's semi-final wasn't that long, but it was difficult. However, we managed to get through. However, we won't stop here. Me and my team will get to the finals and win this thing. I'm Tina. I'm the first proposition speaker of this debate, and I'm here to speak out my word for the topic, should children have a say in family decisions? Foremost, what are family decisions? It's very simple. It's where everyone, including the husband, wife, the children, all actively participate in it. It clearly states that children also participate. Besides, a family cannot be a family without children. So this is why I think children to have their word in family decisions. First of all, it helps children build up confidence for speaking up, which can also be useful for future life. Including children when making choices at family not only gives you contentment when they decide on the correct choice, but it also improves their sense of autonomy. A great deal of parents nowadays involve their kids in making family choices, thereby ensuring that the kids become much more competent as well as confident when an actual problem comes up. In the end, being able to create self-assurance in the kids not only guarantees One that, minute. but they'll literally be far more motivated to come up with choices in future life on their own and perform sooner after making them. The truth is that nearly all children have an idea of the things they desire, but they tend to keep to themselves due to the dignity or fear of their parents. At some point, including the youngsters in decision-making will give them a greater sense of confidence to the point at which they won't feel reluctant about speaking up even when they think their choice is incorrect. They could even provide recommendations. Secondly, it makes them feel important and pleased. Everybody longs to be feel like they, they are an important component of their family's existence. Given, um, given the children a say in choosing the family's enjoyment and snacks, for example, enables them to feel like their viewpoints are important. Even a decision as simple as deciding on what kind of ice cream to buy may render them to be closer to a part of their own family rather than being mere guests. Any kid desires absolutely nothing more than to be valuable. Talking of pleasure, when the youngsters begin to comprehend about specific elements of living as an adult, they often find themselves enjoying what they're doing. The look of the light on the child's face when they permit them to determine which film that everybody will be watching that evening may be as every bit as heartwarming, just like it is for them in any way. The manner in which the gaze of a kid might appear to be lit brightly with happiness in any given circumstance represents one of life's unpredictable greatest places of interest. Being able to make the kids satisfied in such a way can be such an achieving sensation to have. Lastly, it stops the power struggles, which are basically tantrums. Whenever the kid refuses to comply with the commands of their parents, it may contribute to a power struggle. It might involve putting on clothes for school or having vegetables for a meal. Regardless of how challenging a parent endeavors, a child is going to reject it. Tempers become worse on the two sides as frequently the parent pushes the child to finish their duty. It will ultimately come to an end when one among the parties, typically the parent, complies. Power struggles are a nuisance and are able to create into an established routine if they're not taken care of. Three minutes. Children can sometimes behave in such a manner because they want to get the attention of their parents. On a different note, when young children are presented with some autonomy to make selections, it sometimes discourages a power struggle. They encounter an improvement in resilience and control over themselves as a consequence of this. 
Children would tend to be less probable to rebel when their parents ask them to do a particular thing. If a child gets to choose a meal of choice, for case in point, they will follow along with the directions all day long without objections. In conclusion, children should have a say in family decisions to improve their confidence and to enhance their feeling of importance and pleasure. Decision making just for simple things at a young age may affect a child's future, like their dream or future career could involve deciding on major things that are crucial. However, they should only make really small and simple ones. This marks the end of my speech. Thank you for taking your time and being here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tina. Uh, we'll now begin the one minute preparation process for our next, uh, before our next speaker is invited. Okay, thank you for your patience, everybody. I would now like to invite the first speaker of the opposition team, Lucy, to make her opening statements and her rebuttal. Your time starts three, two, one, go. Greetings, everyone. I'm Lucy. I'm Lucy, the first speaker of team MLM. And the motion for today is that should children have a say in the family decisions? Since we're on the opposition side, we're going to convince you that children should not have a say in family decisions. First of all, I would like to fix the definition. So we define children as typically under 18 years old. And the shouldn't have a say part, it means that they still have suggestions, ideas, and considerations. But the ultimate decision is on the adult. And the children's decision and suggestions will develop under the guidance of the parents. Now, I would like to start with my rebuttal. Your first two ideas about that children will feel confidence and feel like they're important and play a big part in their family. But that could just lead into imbalanced power, which I will talk One more minute. closely about it later. And nextly, your next idea is about that children will throw a tantrum and we should give children small decisions. But that would just lead me into my arguments. And my first argument is that children will be pampered, develop bad habits if parents listen to them what they say. Like children throwing a tantrum and many parents are afraid of children throwing a tantrum in uh, the middle of lots of people. So they'll let their children do whatever they want, like what they should order at a restaurant, where they should go, or what should they do. My next argument is that children are irresponsible and they don't have enough experience and can make the terrible choices. Maturity, they don't have enough experiences in life and their, decision, and their decisions, they don't have benefits, both for the family and in the long run. And they might not fully understand the consequences of the choices. While parents, when they make choices, they're economically beneficial decisions and everyone can have fun while doing the activities. And also, if parents make the wrong choice, they can face for the action. While children, they're, due to my definition, they're under 18 years old, so they can't face or take in their responsibility. Next, and balance of power, as I already uh, as I already mentioned, children will feel like they have the same power as parents. So that will lead to children thinking that they have lots of power in the family. For example, they may say that what time should their bedtime be or what should they eat and things like that, which you take it into the small things that children shouldn't have a decision. 
but this is it beneficial for the health and they will make bad decisions as I already mentioned. And next, parents are responsible for raising their kids for the well-being as parents and giving too Three much minutes. power can disrupt the basic family structure and it might lead to unnecessary conflicts in a family and that will children will be involved in uh, bad things like uh, everyone want to uh, like your sister want to do this while you want to do that and that will lead to fighting in the family. So we still have a few more ideas, but my teammates will finish it. That's my speech and thank you. Thank you very much, Lucy. We'll now begin the one minute preparation period before the second uh, proposition speaker makes their case. Okay, uh, just while we're on this preparation period, guys, does anybody need any explanations about how the the points of interest are supposed to work? Uh, or, do we all know, or do we all know how that function of the debate should work? Jason. Um. So... I think, in my opinion, I think like the point point of interest should be, uh, first in uh, the first and second minutes it shouldn't be opened, and then from the second to to the third it can, and then from from the last minutes it it it, it will be shut down. But yeah, then, well, if that's we how want it's, to, that's how yeah. it's supposed to work. Um, and, and as well, I suppose the other thing about it, I would say, is that the anybody who's moderating a debate just needs to make sure that they're verbalizing that one minute to start the POI section and saying three minutes to close it off. Um, yeah, just that way uh, people don't have to like look down at the chat box. They can just hear it. Um, so, yeah, other than that, sweet. That sounds awesome. So thank you again for your patience, everybody. I'd now like to invite the proposition speaker, as uh, proposition team's second speaker, Anna, to continue building the proposition's case. Anna, if you're ready, your time starts. Three, two, one, go. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Anna, the second speaker from the proposition teams. Advocating to the children to have a say in family discussions. Our teams comprise that passionate individuals who firmly believe that our team has comprised the passionate individuals who firmly believe that the empowering children and their voice. As we devil in this debate, let us remember the voice of the word and Nessus Mander. There can be no keener on relations and society, so that way is treat children in spurt, creating a soul, and the way it's treat the children is by creating a, a compensation inclusive the societies that we are through. Children should be given opportunities to contribute the family discussion makings. But before going to my arguments, let me start with a rebuttal. At the first speaker from the opposition team says that children have limited life experience One minute. and may not fully understand the consequence of this uh this reason and they might not have maturity to have the making and power informed and discussion. While it is true that students limited to experience, important and acknowledge that they are constantly developing the learning. By limited the discussion by making the abilities basis on solace and their age, we might be denying them to opportunity to learn and grow. With a barbaric guy stand, adults and assess the operated of resorters. Children have the ability to develop their maturities and discussion-making skills, necessaries for informed actions. Furthermore, it's important to recognize that the adults have made the mistake and they are not always fully aware that the consequence of the discussion. Therefore, we should not discount children's abilities to make a discussion based on their solely on their age. 
Instead, we should provide them to support or guide them and in the development discussion making process. In my opinion, I have three main arguments why I believe that children have to have a safe and family discussion. First is that it can develop the discussion making skills, like allowing to the student participate in a family discussion, making and help them to develop the essential life skills and in today's societies, where it depends and critical thinkings are expressing on their op opinions. By involving them family discussion, we can equip them with the abilities and analyze the situation and weight options and communicate a skill that will benefit them to throughout their life. Second is that it can enhance the family dynamics and communication. In many ways, household today, there is a growing and recognition that fostering opens on the communication among to the family members and they that help viewers family discussion is can create more inclusive and discriminates to students this incurs the better understanding between partner parents and children and uh builds a family trust bond and thirdly is can preparing children for active and charity trip in today's society, place is the various emphasis on active and citizenship and imagine action in the worst deal. Um, with, I think that it is contrary brothers to the society's treasure as the, they have grown older and the foster to be a generation and active, responsible and citizens who help them shade in the better societies in the future. This is the end of my speech and thank you for listening to me. Thank you very much, Anna. We will now begin the one minute preparation period before the second opposition speaker uh, makes his counter case. Okay, thank you everybody for your patience. I'd now like to invite the opposition team's second speaker, Michael, to continue building their counter case. Your time starts three, two, one, go. Okay, so I'm Michael from Team MLM. And so to start off my speech, I would first like to report the proposition. So you said that children, uh, we give them the opportunity to contribute to family decisions. But as we have said, some family decision is not just like just based on the age or like it's not even necessary to them to contribute in it. And you talk about the adult mistakes, which is very really controversial. And I think the main reason that children um like point out the adult is that they may get like overreacted and then it will result in a conflict so that children should learn behavior before they like uh, fixing the adult mistakes and it's usually not that big either and first you, partly you talk about communication which is the understanding One of family between uh, the adult and family uh, adult and children during family decision well, I mean, parents have more responsibility for that to understand the children. Not only the time that family decisions are the only time that they are available to talk about. So I would like to continue with my ideas. That is about conflicts and uh, unnecessary disagreements. 
during family decision. Parents and children may have disagreement about what they prefer. For example, kids like to have as much fun and activities on a holiday, while parents just might prefer relaxation and the quality of the whole time. Uh, letting children have too much of a say lead to unwanted stress in the family. For example, children typically aren't involved in their family decisions about like which guests to come over or have their house or which political party they support. And children, especially teens, may not have a very strong point on these things. So giving them the right to set on these aspects is not needed. Yes, POI? POI? Yes. My apologies. Yes, um, POI. Yes. Kelvin. Okay, so my POI is, one point you make is that the difference between the two generations would be a different in awareness. This led to disagreements in opinions. So children should not, uh, like, should not have a voice in family decision. But if you don't express your opinions, how can parents understand you and how to parent? Uh, that's 15 seconds. Michael, would you like to make a rebuttal to that POI? Yes, so I think that, I, as I said before, family decisions and parents have better understanding of their child. Like, not even they need to say it, parents will know how they feel. And I think that not even family decisions are the only time that is Okay, better. that is, 15, and, that's 15 seconds on that. Back into your and, uh, I want to, speech. Yeah, and I would like to set the last idea of mine. So basically, it's up to the family situation and parents' responsibility to make the right amount of the family decision the child could contribute in. It is a children's right to their ideas to be respected. It's the law also. It's depend on the age and maturity of the child to let them make more or less decision or contribution. Family uh, situation may affect how they let the children decide about certain things. For example, Poor family try to limit the child choices of the meal they're going to have. Letting, Five minutes. Yeah, uh, letting children, letting children have, uh, letting children have too much of a say can uh let children have suggestion and idea, but the last approval or the last decision is made than the adult because children can have some good points also. And so that based on the family situation and when the child is enough mature, 18 years old, we can give them the right amount of suggestion based on their age and maturity, but it's never the children who make the decision for themselves until they are 18, which they are enough to take responsibility for themselves and they can do everything they want it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. We will now begin the one minute preparation period before the third speaker for the proposition team. Okay, thank you everybody for your patience. I would now like to invite the proposition team's third speaker, Kelvin, to make their closing remarks. If you're ready, your time starts in three, two, one, go. Good day, extension just what and teammates. 
I'm Kelvin, the topic of the problem size, and the speech I will present three parts. Before going further into my speech, I want to begin with the rebuttal. One of the opinions expressed by the second opposite speaker was that children should have a say in family decisions because of the influence of the feudalism. Children's lifestyle follow the unconditional agreement of their parents. The difference between the parents' old lifestyles, ideologies, and the children's adoption of modern values make it easy for disagreements and conflicts to occur within the families. However, I disagree with that point of view. People often say a strong family is doing everything together and deciding important tasks together, sometimes including children if necessary. The development of economic and social life and what is called the relationship between parents and children also have marked changes. In Vietnam, Article 75 of Children Laws clearly states parents and family members must respect, listen, consider, respond, and explain the child's opinions and wishes based on their age level of development, condition, and family situation. As you say, in the eyes of parents, children are always the ones who have not eaten enough, have not worried enough, and are not mentally mature enough to have a same family decision. In my opinion, it's not entirely- One minute. According to a survey by Vietnam Women's newspaper on the topic, children for important families are an opportunity to express their opinions. 50% of children have many opportunities to express their opinions and 46% of children have an opportunity to express their opinion in some decisions. The remaining share that have the opportunity but did not dare to speak up. The problem they expressed were studying with 38%, entertainment with 30 and discrimination in the family with 12%. The rest are a real and problem and concerns in their life. Instead of parents deciding everything, they should gradually give the children the right to decide on some small issues such as and such as what they want to eat or what they do learn in life under supervision and guidance that parents effect. It also can help children develop the independence, confidence, and better critical thinking. Nowadays, many families do not do not spend time communicating and chatting with the children, but immediately make decisions such as what career to choose, who to play with, etc., and impose them on the child without consulting the child. They think that everything parents do is always the best thing for their children. It makes children feel lost, despite, distracted, and will have negative behavior toward their parents, especially during puberty, which certain changes in both physical and psychological health. Understanding from parents is essential. It helps children be more active and stay away from social evils. Experts say that children's participation in family speech will bring a strong bond between family and community because it helps children be more open when talking about issues that affect them help them improve their sense of responsibility, ownership, and develop problem-solving skills. Next, I will summarize the main content of my group. One, children are members of the family and have the right Three to minutes. choose their size on small issues such as where they want to want to study and work as long as that decision is acceptable and only require a little guidance from parents. There is a way to change children to face future life, face difficulties, and resignation when growing up. Two, all children want to feel important in the family by allowing them to decide on snack or entertainment. You give them a place in the families where the voice is heard. Three, re be respectful and listen. Perhaps a child used a movie that wasn't as good as he told, or a dessert that wasn't as delicious as he made. They need to understand that not every decision is successful. Sometimes they need to ask others and respect on other people's opinions. In summary, I firmly believe that our group is a worthy winner because we presented strong argument in flavor of our group manager and effectively refuted the other group opinions. Thank you for listening. Dr. Mark, the end was fish. Thank you very much, Kelvin. Uh, we'll now begin the one minute preparation period before Mina summarizes the opposition's case.
Okay, thank you everybody for your patience. I would now like to invite uh, Mina, the third speaker of the opposition team, to summarise the opposition's case. Mina, when you're ready, your time starts in three, two, one, go. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Mina, the third speaker of our position team. Our motion today is this belief that children should have the, a say in the family. And our team reprints up, reprint, re, pre -print. In presenting the opposition team, uh, we I will summarize my teammates' ideas and rebut. So, firstly, let's come to my rebuttals. Your first speakers of uh, all of your speakers have stated that children have the ability, uh, to have uh to make the choice and decision for the family. But in my opinion, uh, choices and decisions are based on our based on experience and the and and when you have experience you will give out good choice and decisions and as my team had def uh defined that children one minute a suggestion but it is not all and they have to uh and they have to have their parents guidance and that is my rebuttals, and I will summarize my teammates' idea. The first one is children will be pampered and they'll develop bad habits of parents to listen to what they say. Well, when children are listened by parents and parents followed their uh follow their words every time, the children will be get spoiled and will have the bad habits. For example, parents know what is bad and what is good for children, but children just want to have the benefits of their own. Secondly, children are irresponsible and don't have enough experience and can't make the right choice. And I have said before, they don't have the experience to uh, experience they don't have the experience. They can't make choice because of that. And obviously, they just want, they just choose what they want. They don't really have the ability to care for others and the real uh, drawbacks of their choice. Thirdly, the imbalance of power. This is related to the my team first idea because when children have the same power as parents, that will lead to children thinking that they are really powerful and can they can do whatever they like. Fourthly, conflict and disagreements. Well, children just like playing, they are really naughty. So sometimes the disagreements between the two generations will be very big and it leads to bigger problems. Last but Three not least, is up to the family situation and parents' responsibility. Is the children's right that their ideas and suggestions be respected? It depends on the age maturity of the children to let them make less or more decision. But all of them can't be allowed, and it will lead to a lot of problems. And that is my speech. Thanks a lot for listening and. And I'm proudly present that children should not have a voice in a family. So, thank you. Thank you very much, Mina. We will now begin the two minute uh, period for the preparation of the opposition's reply speech. Mm -hmm.
Okay, I would now like to invite uh, the reply speaker for the opposition team to present their reply speech. And just a reminder, there are no points of information in a reply speech. Three, two, one, go. I might call um, the second speaker or call the reply speaker for opposition. Now, first, I would like to introduce the conscience of the debate. So you said what well, contribution of uh, children, which will respond with maturity and importantly, unnecessary involvement of children in all of the family decisions. You said about the responsible of kids for making their choice earlier, but will respond with the parents' responsibility, which they account for the laws and the kids themselves. And which we present that it will cause conflicts if based on the children lack of reactive behaviors, as I already said. So I would like to summarize it with your best case is that children may get more brave and familiarity with making decision uh, because they are so familiar with it right now and they will make it in life and maybe more successful person, who knows. But our worst case is that at least the parents is responsible for that like they are responsible for the law themselves and have not letting children have not like too much I would say may lead to unnecessary conflicts so we have to say that it depends on the children age like um 17 that they are the amount of uh choice and decision and suggestion that they are allowed to make is significantly higher than 11 years old for example and that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. I would now like to invite the reply speaker for the proposition team to deliver their reply speech. Three, two, one, go. Thank you all, judges, the moderator, the opposing team, and the audience for being here. I'm Tina. I'm the first proposition speaker and also my team's reply speaker. I have come here to speak up about what qualities of my team are, what we did right and better, and the defaults of the other team, what they did wrong and do not deserve to win. Foremost, I would like to say that my team and I say arguments that showed how it would help them build up their confidence, since when they want to express their opinions, they want to speak up rather than being hidden behind. And if they get the opportunity to do it more and more, their chances of getting their dream job might be increased compared to others. We also mentioned that it helps build bonds between members, as they discuss different opinions of different members to find out which one would be the most suitable. This can be useful to find out what everyone's likings are, enhancing the bond between one another. We have the advantage of clarified arguments. We stated them clearly of body language. We used hand gestures most of the time of rebuttals. We counter argued the majority of their arguments and POI, even though we used a little, but it was more than the opposing side. However, the opposition team is fairly good. I see some hand gestures coming out from at some point, but they're not doing it as frequently as we are for the first and second speaker. The tone in their speech is very neutral for the first and second speaker again. It's as if there was no emotion in them, unlike from ours. Our speech tone is different from time to time, making our speech livelier and more enthusiastic. This is one disadvantage. The second one is that there is literally no POI coming out of them, making us just slide through our speech with ease. Although we gave one or two POIs, it's at least more than zero. To finalize my reply speech, I want to give a reminder of how my team and I ought to work against the success with our clarified arguments and emotive tones, and that the other team shouldn't have victory with neither tone nor emotion in their speech and with no POI at all. Thank you for listening and giving your fullest attention. Thank you very much, Tina. Okay, so that concludes the uh, that concludes the argument section of our debate. I'm going to open up a breakout room now for the judges and myself. And we're going to Michael, uh, Michael, yes? please there is um there is a different little bit. We open the breakout room, but the breakout room is for the two team to join there, have a rest, and they will um have a this you know discussion a teacher chat but the church and the moderator please stay in the main room and have a discussion. Okay, no worries. Yeah. Um, in that case... Do you um, want me to open the room for you? 
Uh, um, yes, please. But what should we do with? Uh, what should we do with the observers? Yeah, the observer can join. Um, can join either the room or, uh, yeah. So the the observer can join either the room, with the, yeah. So I open the two room, and yep. then I let them right. Okay. So I will. Everyone, please join the room because if you don't join the room, I have to put you in the waiting room. All right. So in the main room, it should be only the judges, the moderator, and myself. Yeah, with like you know, like the supervisor, organizer. Yeah, and we close the background room, and you can join everyone in back in the main room to listen to the, uh, the result. Okay, now room open. <laughs> yes, Emily, you can go join the right churches. Please stay here. Uh, room one, it can be for the proposition. Um, room two for the opposition. You can sing a song, sharing the story, telling jokes, do whatever you like, playing games, right? Uh, debater, you done the work, so <laughs> or have a reflection, all right? The watcher, yes, the watcher, you can join there too, right? Oh, I'm sorry, those... I just clicked into the wrong button. I just checked out. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. All right, uh, for, for uh, Vike and Order, if you're not the judge for today, you're welcome to stay in the main room for discussion, for the, what we call shadow judge, right? Because that is a good experience for you as well, yeah? Okay, <laughs> so, um, wait. We already have four judges. No, no, no. If you not register as a judge, you just staying, you know, like for for observe. So, like there are a, a few. Uh, what we call is shadow judge. You can stay. Um, keep right. You know, up as observing. Is it okay, Mister Michael? Yeah, that's fine. Um, I was just gonna say that. Um. If you ever hear us referring to shadow judges or shadow uh, or shadow moderators, that just means that they're there for the experience. They're there to watch and learn, but they're not there to participate. So it will only be Judge Hamp, Judge Victoria, Judge Winston and Judge Jason, whose uh, scores and marks matter in the result of this debate. The others are just here to spectate and see how you do it. Okay. All right. Okay. So, so right. Um, wait, wait, wait. There are still a few person. So on the observer, if you not go to the room, uh, uh, they're all observers that are left. So if they want to be here, that that's fine. There's no debaters here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So right. Um, judges, you can just send me your points uh from the debate and then take them and add with the reply speeches and then I'll just like yeah. toss them together and then just divide up for do we'll find out one. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um so and while you're doing that as well, remember to discuss feedback to give back to the debaters about what they did well and what they can improve on. I didn't do anything for the uh, for the reply speech. I never read the reply speech because I'm dumb. Yes, try to mark it. Um, well, if that's the uh, so in future rounds, um, if you need it, let us know and we can we can train you on how to uh on how to judge the reply speeches. Um, but yeah, uh in uh but if if you don't need that in future, then yeah, just try and um try and catch the marks. But uh, yeah, if you if you didn't do it today, just give us the marks that you have done, and we'll, I suppose we can like average it out or something, or um uh, to give them a reply score. Is it Ham? Sorry, who's that? Ham. I mean, you know, if you feel that you're not ready, we can have pre judges. It's fine, and you can be the observer, and you can learn 
for experience. George, just send me your marks. Okay. Oh, him. Okay. So I see here 53, 52.5. So, Ham, you didn't count the reply speeches, did you? Of course not. I, I never read reply speeches. I don't even know. And do you still that. remember the, uh, any anything from the reply speech? You could just count it like. Two, uh, sorry, 2.5, 5, 7.5, and 10, like that, in four categories. Honestly, no. All right, I'm just going to count it without it. 52.5. Okay. And one more from Victoria. Yes. Just send your marks, your marks, your marks for both teams. Let me see. Okay. Mm. And. Uh, oh, about 55? So proposition 55, right? Yeah. Okay, proposition 56, good. Let's count it. Divide four, 56. Okay, 228. Divide four. Oh, 57. So the total of opposition is 57. Now for the proposition time. 55 plus 55.5 plus 53 plus 58.5. Okay, 222. 55.5. Good. All right. Already finished. So the total of both teams, opposition wins with 57 points and proposition lose with 55.5 points. Yep, 55.5 and 57. So that means the opposition team wins. Let me just yeah. send it. All oh, right. So I will. I will just, I'm just announce. I, I'm, okay, Winston will announce. Okay. Yeah. I will be the okay. last one to explain the best speaker. All right, best speaker is Michael. I think Michael. What you think? I don't know. Wait, I, I mean, just choose the best speaker, man. It says speaker, just choose one. I chose Michael. It's a bit cloudy this time. 
No, really good. So you won't use? Quick question based on your wording. When you say you just picked a speaker to be best speaker, did you pick it based on skill or did you like any, many, money mow it? Um, I mean, when I think of a best speaker, I think about like if his rebuttals are really great or his, I mean, like his ideas are strong. I don't pick um, best speakers based on their like good English skills. No. Okay. Um. Little note for the future, that's actually a strong consideration of what should make the best speaker, um, like best overall. So it isn't just the quality of the arguments. It isn't just uh, the accent or the strength or, or their, their fluency. It's not just any rebuttals they may have done. It's everything combined. So I suppose if you were scoring each individual speaker, the best thing to do would be to tally up the scores for each individual speaker that you've judged. And then whichever speaker has the highest score, they realistically should be your best speaker overall because you've marked them the highest in everything out of every individual in the debate. <laughs> Probably. All right. I have two with the same score. We'll I only have one happen. highest, that is Michael. Everyone else, 16 and 17, only Michael's 18. Oh, beautiful. Then you chose your best speaker perfectly. If if he's the one with the highest score you gave. Um, if you have someone with two if you have two debaters with identical scores, uh ooh, you're just gonna have to make a judgment call then. So if there were so if you so yeah, so if you listen to the two debaters and you've given them both the same score. Um, yeah, it's it's literally just you're just gonna have to pick which one you think is the best speaker. Uh, and then you put your vote forth and out of the four judges, whichever speaker has the most votes or whichever speaker is, yeah, whichever speaker is elected by all four judges. But it shouldn't just be like a, Oh well, I like them, so I'm gonna pick them. It should it, you, you should really take some consideration with this decision. But but Mr. Marco, can I ask something? Who do you yeah. think is the best speaker? Who do I think is the best speaker? Um, I wasn't paying super 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 attention to the speeches because I was moderating, but the two that stood out the most to me were actually, I couldn't decide between Tina and Mina. Tina and Mina? Um, I mean, like speakers that they speak really fast, I mark them like the lowest of them all because like they speak too fast, making the judges really hard. They are really, they are really hard to hear. Yeah. And and that is something really that fast. you do need to take into consideration when you're marking the debate. So if you can't understand them, then and that realistically should affect the rest of their scores. Because if you can't understand them, you can't find out just how good their like how good their content is, sort of thing. So being understood, it, yeah, that that can have a massive effect on the rest of their score. Uh -huh. um, but so yeah. The rest of the judges, who do you think is the best speaker? All right, final decision, Lucy. Okay, Lucy. Okay, one Lucy and one Michael. And what else? Victoria. Hmm? Yes. Who do you think the best speaker? speaker? I think is Kevin, I think. Kevin, okay, okay, one for Kelvin. Kelvin? Okay, Winston, and you? Last guy. Kelvin. Kelvin, <clears throat> okay, okay, okay. So two votes for Kelvin. And only one vote for Michael, one vote for Kelvin, Lucy. Not Kelvin. Do we, is it even Kevin. necessary that we can Kevin. just ask observers? No. Um, if it's to do with the decision or the outcome of the debate, no, it's solely on the judges. Um, okay. 
But uh, when you guys do, uh, when we do invite the speakers back in, and <laughs> when we do invite the speakers back in, um, and you announce the winners and the results and everything, make sure that as the judges, when it's your turn to deliver your feedback, make sure you do tell the debaters which one you personally voted for and thought was the best speaker overall and tell them why, even though they didn't win, because like the, the simple fact of it is the reason that Kelvin is going to be considered the best speaker overall is because two judges voted for it and the other two judges voted for someone else. So he won by popular vote. But all of your considerations as to who is the best speaker overall, like that still matters because you guys are still judging the debate. Like it's still your decisions. It's going to decide the winners, the losers, the champions, the runners up. Um, so let them know that because those are things that they've done well. Um, yeah, well, because those are things that they have done well. Uh, and they deserve to hear about them, you know, because that's going to encourage them and let them know, okay, so my content was good, for example. Uh, I had a lot of good arguments, but now I need to work on improving my delivery. Um, you know, so I'll work on my cadence, I'll work on my vocal modulation, all these things. Uh, so, yeah, even though they didn't win, let them know they were in the running and tell them why, because that's just positive feedback for them to take forward. Okay, so like, um, there are four judges. One will announce the best speaker and the whole winning team points. That is for the last one. The second, the 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 second last speaker, uh, the judge will um say why the best speaker is something. Okay, mm -hmm. and then cool. and then the two first speakers will give feedback to both the both the uh, the proposition and opposition. Yeah, well, so the way, yeah, so, I mean, it kind of appears like you've become the head judge of this panel, Jason, because you seem to be running things pretty smoothly and pretty well. Um, so, yeah, um, I would, br when you bring everybody back in, um, announce the runners-up and then announce the winners. Okay. Um, first, then announce who won best speaker overall. Um, and then once you've done that, uh, so, uh, give your feedback of all of the of the debaters. Then we can move on to the next judge, the next judge, the next judge uh, to all give your feedback. And um, yeah, and then during each judge's turn to give feedback, you can say, well, I personally voted for this person to be the best speaker overall. And here's why. And then everyone can hear okay, well, there's one for Winston, one for this one, not Winston, Winston's a judge, Kelvin, one for Kelvin, one for Michael, up oh, two for Kelvin, he wins. And then, so you kind of let them know of the process of how you decided the winner. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, it just kind of takes the mystery out of it. For them, makes it more understandable, makes the process okay. less scary, less frustrating if they understand why they won, why they lost. Okay. So I yeah, ask? I'm going to give uh just a just uh some feedback to the losing team, and then yeah. I I think um Winston is suitable for really announcing the best speaker and the points. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think Victoria. Um, okay, should explain the uh, no. I think yeah, Victoria will explain why Kevin is the best speaker, and yeah. uh Ham will give. Feedback to the opposition team. Yeah, uh, can I skip that part? I am morally scared of judging <laughs> for real. Why for? What's up, Ham? What's going on? Because I don't think I would make a good judge. I always chicken out. No, you're good. No, well, I'm not good. I am well, we've seen your one. scores. Let's go back here. Also, everyone, uh -oh. and can we delete the scores. Uh, wouldn't the so the scores that you've Wait. given here? Um, you didn't do reply speeches, right? No. 
So even the fact that you didn't do reply speeches, your scores are still pretty much fairly in line with the rest of the judges. So it's clear to me that you haven't done a bad job. I mean, no, I don't, no, I don't know part. your exact process. I don't know, like, your yeah. I, I don't know your thought process behind scoring the debaters as you did, but you've ended up in the same ballpark as them. So clearly there's, there's parts of this that you're doing well. So don't beat yourself up and don't think that you're rubbish just because you feel like you've had one off day. No, if that's the, no, if, if that's the case, we can offer more, more training opportunities in the future to, uh, to up everybody's skill if they're interested. So like, I would say you've done a good job today. So don't, don't beat yourself up. You've done well. I'm going to beat myself up, nonetheless. Don't I do it. Don't do it. I'm going to do it. Don't judge I, him. I, I don't do it. Miss Duke, you're the teacher here. Tell him not to do it. Just say, Ms. Duke. What's going on? Ms. The Duke, reason just that say, you are do here, man, the Duke. reason that you are here, because I believe in you, right? Yeah. I'm, the, I'm the person who have a good observation I could tell you that I could pick, uh, you know, I can see a lot of potential in the in the people. And mm -hmm. that's why I'm the person who has selected the moderator, who selected the student helpers, and who select the churches. All right. I'm here with the reason. And you are selected, okay? <laughs> but but the problem is there I is don't know problem. how to give feedback. Like I could I could definitely give out my points, but I don't know what to look for. I look for overall things that the speaker, you know, are Be well yourself, and, 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 uh, Yeah, well, I mean, put, put... Just, just think, just, just think easily. Put it this way. I, I mean, could... like, just, just think easily. Just, like, if, no, if Ham, Ham just Ham, gives I'm the not, point... I'm not going to listen to any more excuses. I, 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 no, I guarantee I you, I guarantee you that Winston, Victoria, and Jason all would have scored each debate a slightly different. That's because they have opinions of things that they consider to be good debating, things they consider to be debating that needs more work, and things they consider to be absolutely horrendous. Um, and that's all the other judges have mark towards is their own personal their own personal opinion of what makes a good debater so as long as you've done that as long as you've listened to each speaker and gone well i think they've done this bit well so i'm going to mark them good for that oh this isn't so good maybe not such so good for that then that's fine you're on the right track but if you've just sat there and gone paper pen and gone i'm scoring a debate Man, let's see what happens then yeah, your debating judging probably needs some work. But if you've yeah. sat there and listened to each speaker and gone, well, their pacing's good. I can understand <laughs> what they're saying. They're making good arguments. I'll give them a score like this and a score like that. Oh. Hey, That's what is he doing here? Hey, hey, hey. Uh, Should we allow them to be here or no? Nope, not oh, yet. Nope. Oh, wait. Okay, Michael, you need to go back. All right. Yeah. Michael and just watching out of this room, please. Michael, you have to go to the 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 room. Uh, well, need out. Yeah. Okay, so we've got out. So we've got everything we need. We've got the proposition score. The I thought we said the opposition one. Proposition one. Ah, never mind. Anyway, um, so so we've got our conclusion we've got our proposition versus opposition final scores we've got our best speaker do we know what we want to say to each debater as feedback okay well then <laughs> you see that is problem okay um we will run a training session uh, based on, uh, we'll 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 run a training session at a later date on how to cope with all of this. Um, but yeah, so for now, when when you give feedback, um, I'm just trying to think. So Judge Hamp, 
Um, if you just give your feedback to be a little, a little bit more generic just for today, then before next week, uh, we can hold a training session on methods to perhaps take notes on the debaters or notes to remember what they did well. Um, but yeah, so just, I, I, I suppose either, either offer to not give feedback today or just give generic feedback. But, um, yeah, I, I, I would say probably just, probably just, uh, announce who you think is the best speaker overall. Um, and, you know, even, even, even if it's something like, uh, well, when I was scoring the teams, uh, I thought the I thought the opposition team was a little bit easier to understand, or I thought the opposition team spoke a little bit fast, or whatever the case is. But uh, yeah, just 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 try and offer something general like that when you talk about your best speaker nomination. Either that, or if you're not up to it, just say so, and you don't have to present. Uh -huh. Oh, sorry. Um, so if Han doesn't want, so I think like if Victoria could give, um, since she marked opposition higher, so I think it'll be suitable if she can just um give feedback to the opposition, and then None. Winston would just explain the best speaker because he chose Kevin, and Han would just be the announcer. Okay, so Jason's giving feedback to the proposition team, Victoria's giving it to the opposition team, and Winston's making the announcement about best speaker. Am I correct? Yep, yeah. yes. Beautiful. Okay, are we ready to bring wait. everyone back in? Wait, wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait. And, and who can like, uh, give feedbacks to the best speaker? You, you. Okay, yeah. okay. All right. Okay, Should so I close the room now? Yeah, so I'm going to close the room. room. Is that cool? All right, yeah. done. Rooms I are mean, closed. What's the new? You explain why why Calvin's the best speaker like that. Okay. Um. So as the moderator, I'll I'll announce this session in, and then I'll hand it over to you guys to run from there to make your announcements. Okay, I'll start first. Okay. Oh. Okay. You, 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 I'll stop. So hello, everybody. Welcome back. Thank you for your patience during our harsh, rough and tumble deliver a deliberation to decide the winners. Um, so first of all, with the results and the feedback for the proposition team, I'll hand over to Judge Jason. And uh, then the other judges are going to give the rest of the debaters their feedback. All right, thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Judge Jason. So I would like to um, give some feedback to the proposition team, which is Team Terrific Trio. So first, let's come with Tina. Tina, you did a really amazing, good job. I mean, like, your ideas were really, really good and advanced. But I highly think that you spoke a little bit too fast, which is too hard for me to hear. And also, like, with that fast beat, I think that some judges else, they will still be like really confused, not really hearing. I mean, I can still hear, but some some words, important per words, I can't hear. It's so fast. Okay, next, Anna. Anna, you are really, really good. I think I have nothing to say about you. Yeah. Okay, next, um, the last and third speaker, that is Kelvin. Kelvin, I think that you shouldn't be um adding up so many so many things else because your team has already said all. You just need to rebut all of the other team's ideas and just summarize all of your team's ideas again. You don't need to add something more, which is I think that is the role of the third speaker in in a team yeah so after the feedback of proposition i would like to pass it to judge victoria to give the feedback to opposition team thank you okay so so i prefer the opposition team more because of course 
they are even not they're not i mean they're all correct not not them are false some sometimes that children don't when uh, when children's rate or doing some mistakes of the parents that's just not polite at all and on and on so they need to study respect more then uh, then they have a turn to grow up and then get some of the mistakes that their parents have some and also i mean the prop doesn't even uh, doesn't even uh, feeling bad or no or is it a failure but the privatization team is also really good they're also true they're not false at all that children children could only could only get some mistakes off there and also sometimes we get in trouble and also i just want to say that the opposition team is doing a really good job so that's my presentation thanks for listening i think Okay, I'll now hand it over to Judge Winston to talk about uh, the best speaker overall. Judge Winston. Wait, sorry. Oh, I thought I was turning on my mic. So, uh... Now, now we're gonna announce the best speaker for today. Give him, him a her a round of applause. So our best speaker for today is Kevin. Uh, we choose, yay. Uh, we choose him because he have like some body language, and his speaking speed was like decent. So like we can hear him, him a lot. Uh, his point was pretty good, and I was pretty impressed with his rebuttals. So, um, Judge Jason said, uh, Kevin, I like too much points, which is like, I agree because he didn't chose Kevin. But the other two, which is me and the other judge, chose Kevin. So, yeah, congrats, Kevin, for being the best speaker for today's debate. Well, yeah, congrats, so. congratulations, Kevin, Kelvin. At first, I chose Michael and then Ham chose Lucy, but then the other two judges, Winston and Victoria, chose you. So in the end, you were the winner. Congrats. Congratulations, Kelvin. Um, We have announced the results of the actual debate, yeah? Yeah, Ham, you can go. Now, uh, yes, it has been a great debate. You have made it to <clears throat> you have made it to the semifinal, uh, semifinals, and I am happy to announce. I'm glad and happy to announce that the opposition team has won by a measly one point five points. It is uh, really close, as both teams have done really well. Everyone has put in their effort, their work, and I would like to congratulate the opposition team, which is Team MLM, who will be moving on to the finals. Congratulations, Team MLM, with 57 points, and um, Team Trophic Trio, 55.5 points. Congratulations. Congratulations to Team MLM. So is that Team Multi-Level Marketing? I um, don't know. Yeah. Is that, is, is, that, is that secretly Team Pyramid Scheme? It's me, now, Lucy, Mike. <laughs> no, it's Team <laughs> Pyramid Scheme. And me. <laughs> but congratulations to our opposition team. Commiserations to our proposition team. Uh, that is the end of the debate now. Um, the judges have delivered their results and their feedback. So unless there are any other questions 
Sorry, there's a washing machine going at my house at the moment, so it's very loud. But um, unless there are any other questions, we're done for today. Congratulations and well done to all of our debaters. Okay, so a big thank you for me as the result is my blowing. <laughs> Congratulations, everyone. So, Congratulations, Team Pyramid Scheme. Yes. All right, so we see you again next week. I'm never doing that the again. Final. Yes. Um, right, we don't know who will be the second team for the final yet, right? So may I confirm, so this will be m and &M to for debate as you know to win whether the first and second position is it correct mr michael uh sorry say that again miss Doug. so the team terrific trial will debate again for the third position uh, for the third, yes. yep and then the m and m will debate again for the first position correct so yes yeah, yeah. so um yeah that's correct all right okay thank you everyone um, don't forget to come back here at two o'clock to support uh, another debate of um, winners and uh, friends. Yeah, I'm never Bye, being a judge again. I'm going to beat myself up in my own home. <laughs> no, uh, come on, him. <laughs> Thank you, all the judges and moderators. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. We'll see you all Bye. later. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 I'm gone. So I'm ending Zoom, okay? Bye.